Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked, can you please make a video on how to handle a major crush in the high school? I didn't do anything haram, lowered my gaze, never talked to her, etc. But I've become attached to a person a lot and it's making me very sad. The only reason I know what she looks like is through accidental looks. I have class with her every day, and so every day I like her more and more because she talks a lot, and that is out of my control. She sits at the table behind me and talks very loudly. How can I deal with this from an emotional standpoint? She is a uh, Kafir Christian woman, though I don't think she's that religious, and I think she hates me because I used to give my Christian teacher Dawa last semester, and she used to overhear, and I think she didn't like it when I used to tell my teacher that Isa والسلام, could not have been a law because he used to eat food and go to the washroom and because he was born and because Allah could destroy him whenever he wanted and that Allah could not be everywhere because he could not be in the bathrooms and that Paul could be trusted but cannot be trusted. Because of that, I assume because of that, I overheard hurtful words from her about me. Though that particular memory doesn't bother me anymore because I did an ex exercise to overcome that also i did some stupid things when she witnessed but you know whatever my problem isn't about sexual attraction it's about the emotional aspect uh and then the questioner goes on i can't switch out of class because i need the class i used to have class with her in period three but i decided to switch out because that <clears throat> wasn't an, an important subject i'm making dua to al-wahab but he is through his wisdom, delaying the response as a test, it seems. One of the problems is that I'm asking her to marry, I'm asking him to marry her to me, but I think maybe that's not smart because it, this, it will prevent me from letting go. But maybe Allah will answer by giving me exactly that, what I'm hoping for. I can't approach her myself for marriage because she West, she's westernized and we're in high school and doesn't like me, I think, I don't think. I don't think she would be attracted to me anyway, so I ask Allah to make a way. I ask him to also hasten the response, like fulfill the dua tomorrow. Uh, I watched a video of Sheikh Fozan saying you can ask Allah to hasten the response. And so when he does not give me exactly what I want on that day, glorified is he and the most wise, I get sad. So you think it's smart to keep making dua to him to allow me to marry her and to make it make her a Muslima, or should I stop? Very long question. And first I just want to say is that this is a common thing, and you will experience this probably more throughout your life of the experience of being hurt. And unfortunately that happens even in marriage when people divorce. Uh, and this is something which most people experience, especially in the West and area and societies which are open where people have dated and, and other things. So this is a common uh, trial that people deal with. And mostly the people who are positive and people who are going forward and the people who are faithful, they learn and benefit from those hurtful experience. Hurt, it helps to build you as a person and as a believer, uh, you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that the mu'min does not get bit or stung in the same hole twice. So that you should learn from these scenarios. Uh, secondly, another point with regards to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not answering your du'a, perhaps this is the answer to your du'a that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is preventing you from a harmful situation because you're young. And people, as I mentioned, in our youth, we find dozens of crushes. You know, we, we met most of us in those societies, we experience this many times in primary school, in high school, in several times in high school, and it just goes on and on. And uh, people become hurt and so on and so forth. But you, as a believer, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you with that iman, it's up to you to return to your iman and become stronger with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and grow from the experience with that. Keep the iman uh, ahead of you. And I recall hearing a story of one of the salaf 
uh, or one during the era, era of the Seleth, and he was known as a righteous person. I think he was even a person of knowledge, and he uh, was in love, similar to this scenario, with a Christian woman, and she basically said, you know, I'm a Christian, you're a Muslim. No, that's not going to work. And he said, you know, he was so sprung on her, so uh, moved by her, that he actually left his deen. And then it was some fitna, and so he he married her, and then like he died or something like this. It was like a real travesty. So he lost fi dunya wa akhira. He lost in this life as well as the hereafter. So it's not to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't give this to you, but to keep all of your hope uh, in that, uh, you know, it can be dangerous for your feelings and it can be uh, uh, a distraction from your iman and from your ibadah. So use this time and this experience to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides her. And if, if, if it be good for you and her to marry, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless that. So make dua for that. And I want to end with this ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَلَا تَنْكِهُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّ يُؤْمِنَ وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ وَلَا تَنْكِهُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّ يُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا عَبَدٌ وَلَا عَبَدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ وَاللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُو إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَمَغْفِرَةٍ بِإِذْنِهِ وَيُبَيِّنُ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah Tabarak wa ta'ala قال And do not marry al-mushrikat meaning the uh, uh, pagans or idolaters, till they believe. And indeed, a slave woman, uh, a believing slave woman, is better than a free mushrika, even though she pleases you. And give not your daughters in marriage to the mushrikeen till they believe in Allah alone. And verily, a believing slave is better than a free uh, pagan, even though he pleases you. Those invite you to the nar, to the fire, but Allah invites you to paradise and forgiveness by his leave and makes his ayat, his signs, his verses, his lessons, the revelations clear to mankind that they were, may remember. So Imam Asadi mentioned some very beneficial fawaid with this ayat. And one of the things he mentions, he says that the uh, by marrying the you know the, the preference to a believing woman a believing woman is so much uh more to cherish than that which just pleases the eye and maybe there's a comforting in the heart maybe she's a very nice person maybe she's kind maybe her words maybe her manners maybe she has good characteristics but the one who has a man again will benefit you in this life as well as the hereafter and that that disbelief, especially if she's stern on that, can be a trial for you to where you may lose your deen or if you have children, the other things, if it even goes to that level, even if you marry, if you marry and you have children and so on and so forth. So, and then he, he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the sabah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reason. He said, Ulaika yad'una ila nar. He said, because they call you to the fire. They call you to the fire. Because unless she is a humble, disbelieving woman, humble in that she has good conduct and good character and she's chaste and stuff, and that she's going to uh, remind you, mostly it's not going to be the case. She may respect, there are those rare situations where they respect your faith and they actually say, hey, you know, you need to pray. But a believing woman is going to call you to Jannah, you know, if she's from Ahl Iman, if she's strong and uh, from Ahl Iman, especially if she's a practicing Muslim, she's going to call you and tell you to wake up for prayer. She's going to remind you that you you were kind of oppressive in your speech, or she's gonna she's going to uh, you know give you those reminders and that tathkir, 
that tadkir or mu'minin, you know, give you that, uh, that reminder that the believer benefits from. However, those who are not, especially if she's not a, a, a righteous uh, woman from Ahl Kitab, then, uh, and she's not a person necessarily of good conduct, maybe she's so so, more than likely she's going to call you to the nar, as Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala said. Ulaika yad'una the nar. They call you to the fire. Why do you pray? Let's just go to the movie. Uh, you know, you pray all the time. Can't we just go out to eat this time and you, you pray later? Can't you combine your prayers? Can't you just not pray today? Uh, you know, the language may even be different, meaning the, maybe she has uh, uses some foul language. Maybe not excessive, but she uses some foul language. And that has an effect on you as a strong believer who tries to control the tongue. So there's many different ways of calling you to the fire. Or riba, maybe a riba is just adi, or is normal to her, backbiting and namima, and this is going to affect you. So there's many, many ways. And then perhaps maybe she's a religious Christian, okay, and she, or, or yeah, and, and a religious Jew, and she's calling you to her, to to her faith. So there's many different uh, negative potential things. So in your situation. It's best to move on, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah guides her, and make dua to Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it be good for you, gives her to you. If not, protect you from her. So make istikhara and, 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 and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask your believing companions about the situation. And ask your local students of knowledge or, or imams and so forth also to give you advice, additional advice that may be beneficial and may uh, help you feel comforted in your heart. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.